Good afternoon, everybody. I'm David Mouche, President and CEO of Windsor Regional Hospital. Premier Ford and Deputy Premier Elliott, thank you. Thank you for making a promise and keeping a promise. It is well known that Windsor-Essex has been waiting many years to get moving on this new state-of-the-art acute care hospital that is going to be built on this site and will be transformational for our region. We've had some false starts. We were promised funding for Stage 2 to move this project along in the previous government's spring 2017 budget. The promise was not kept, the money never came. Premier and Deputy Premier, we know that in your first half of your mandate, you were able to inform yourselves and your offices about the project and the importance of it for Windsor-Essex. Premier, you visited Windsor-Essex in August 2020 while we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, and you listened. You listen to many local community leaders expressing that we need this new hospital for Windsor-Essex. You responded during your visit saying you would battle for this project and you would make it number one priority when you return to Queen's Park. And here you are today in Deputy Premier Elliott to confirm the funding we need to officially move into stage two of our project. For our friends here from the media and the community we serve, it's important to know what stage two means. It means there will be a very detailed description of the programs to be delivered, the workload associated with these programs, the staffing, major equipment, and space required. Our community will continue to be directly involved in this planning. This is an exciting time for our community. We have all endured a very busy, anxious period as we navigate through the pandemic. This is the kind of news that gives our region something incredible to look forward to as we make this site right behind me, to my right, a reality for Windsor-Essex. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Deputy Premier Elliott. And to all of you here today, let's get moving. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Janice Kaffer, and I'm the President and CEO at Hotel Du Grace Healthcare here in Windsor. Today's announcement firmly and finally creates the hub for a new hub and spoke approach to the delivery of mental health care through the continuum in our community. Exciting days are ahead, as is a lot of work, hard work, work our teams are ready and excited to do. We are ready for the Center of Excellence for Mental Health and Addictions Care in Windsor-Essex to be a reality and not just a dream. I am grateful for the commitment of this government to this important work. Thanks to Premier Ford for his vision and tenacity in getting this done. My gratitude to Deputy Premier Elliott for her compassion and leadership throughout her career and her ongoing commitment to improving the well-being of those who live with mental illness or addictions. Your history with this file is well known and very well respected here. And I wish to extend our very profound gratitude to Associate Minister Michael Tobolo for his ongoing support to Hotel Du Grace Healthcare, his knowledge about and advocacy for our patients and clients, and for his willingness to hear from our staff whenever he visits. His work has made a difference. This is a great day for us all, and I want to close my remarks with my thanks to Dave Muji and Dave Cook, who have been relentless in their advocacy for our community. You deserve all the good feelings today. It's now my pleasure to welcome to the podium, and I never thought I'd say this out loud, the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford. Well, well first of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and what a, what a great day. Uh, not only in the weather is great, but it's a great day for Windsor-Essex. And, and thank you to Janice and David for being here with us today for this incredible announcement. And thanks to Mayor Delkins for joining us. You've been an absolute champion for the people of Windsor and a huge supporter of this project. In fact, we have a number of our local mayors, which they're, they're absolute champions as well throughout this whole pandemic. So the local mayors, I want to thank each and every one of you and they're with us today. And I'm very, very grateful for all the work you've done. Uh, speaking for myself and Minister Elliott, I can say that it is so great to be back here in Windsor. Since day one, our government made a promise to end hallway health care across Ontario, to make the long overdue investments to ensure that everyone, regardless of where you live in the province, has access 
to high quality health care close to home. The COVID-19 pandemic laid bare the limits of our existing health care capacity, particularly outside the big cities. It made clear how important our mission is and how vital it is that we keep building Ontario without delay. So it gives me great pleasure to be here today to announce a $9.8 million investment, and that's one small slice of the pie, but a $9.8 million uh, support uh, check going uh, to the ongoing planning of the new state-of-the-art acute care hospital for the great folks here in Windsor and Essex County. So again, congratulations. That's, that's fantastic news. This new world-class facility will be built on the grounds right beside me to the, to the right, as David mentioned, and once complete, we'll bring together acute care services at the new hospital site. It will be replacing outdated infrastructure with high-tech facilities and support better connected care in the region. Urgent care and outpatient services will remain at Windsor Regional's Hospital's OLET site. So patients and their families in downtown Windsor will have continued access with no disruption. We're also announcing the $7.8 in additional uh, operating funding for Windsor Regional Hospital starting this this year and, and that is so critical to make sure we continue uh, funding the operational uh, side of things. And Hotel de Grace uh, Healthcare also receiving over 1.57 million. They do incredible work. This funding represents the third straight year this government has increased operating funding for both hospitals. That's welcome news for Ontario's healthcare system and especially for the tremendous people of Windsor Essex. Because this hospital build will bring good, steady jobs to workers and families in this region. And that's especially important today after we learned of the Stellantis decision to cut down operations at the Windsor plant due to a shortage of semiconductors. But folks, I can tell you we're going to ramp that back up with a huge investment ourselves, our feds. Uh, federal partners uh, it's going to be exciting but this was very disappointing and we're encouraging them to work closely with their unions to be sure everything is being done to protect jobs in fact i was speaking with the leadership uh the, the, tomorrow morning from stellantis but i was speaking to the leadership of unifor dave and john and tulio uh from unifor and we we need to stick together and they all know we stand shoulder to shoulder with our workers because we have the most talented and skilled tradespeople anywhere in the entire world, right here in Ontario, right here in Windsor. And they'll be on the front lines of getting this new hospital built. And to the people of Windsor Essex, I wanna say that you deserve this. You've waited decades and decades and that's much too long and our government is gonna be there and make sure this is a priority. So we are thrilled to finally deliver the quality of health care that is growing, the, this growing community needs. Thanks to everyone involved in making this happen. It was a real community effort. Again, thank you and God bless the people of Windsor-Essex. Thank you. Now I'll pass it over to my all-star champion, uh, Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, which was instrumental in making this happen, uh, Minister Elliott. Thank you. Thank you very much, Premier, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I want to begin by thanking the healthcare workers, staff, and leadership teams at Windsor Regional Hospital and Hotel Gia Grace Healthcare for your incredible efforts and commitment to provide exceptional care to patients during the COVID-19 pandemic. From converting the sportsplex into a field hospital and a mass vaccination clinic, to developing a COVID-19 recovery program to support patients with chronic conditions, you have risen to every challenge with creativity and determination. Thank you for going above and beyond to keep your community healthy and safe. Now, Ontario is home to some of the best healthcare teams in the world. But for decades, these world-class healthcare professionals were left without the resources they needed to support their efforts to provide high-quality care. Ontarians deserve better. And that's why our government made a commitment to end hallway health care and build a better, connected health care system centered on the needs of patients. 
Today, we are delivering on that commitment with a $9.8 million investment to support planning for a new state-of-the-art acute care hospital for Windsor and Essex County. The new hospital will consolidate acute care services and replace outdated infrastructure with modern facilities to improve access to care for patients and families. It will also ensure that our health care workers have the tools they need to continue delivering high quality care, including cancer care and complex trauma care. But that's not all. As part of the planning for the new hospital, 68 acute mental health beds are expected to be transferred to Hotel Gia Grace Healthcare. These beds will be used to support a new center of excellence in mental health and addictions in the region, making it easier for people to access the mental health and addiction services they need in one location. The people of Windsor and Essex County can finally look forward to a modern hospital and mental health system that will serve generations to come. Together, we will build a better connected health care system and end hallway health care in Windsor and Essex County. So thank you. And now I would like to turn it over to Mayor Dilkins to share a few words. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Minister. What a terrific day for Windsor Essex. We can finally, finally, finally move forward with the planning and the design of our region's new acute care hospital, thanks to the funding delivered by the Ford government today. Now, on behalf of Warden McNamara and all of my colleagues who are here today across county municipalities, we cannot begin to express our gratitude to you, Premier Ford and Minister Elliott for delivering for us here today. The path to today's announcement, it actually goes back as David talked about several years. In 2017, when the former provincial government announced that Windsor Regional Hospital would move to stage two of planning, our happiness was short-lived since the former government failed to deliver the funding required to proceed. For nearly three years, we've been fighting to correct this flaw. Last summer, when Premier Ford came to our region, he met with all local mayors from across the county and we confirmed for him that our key priority is to get this hospital built. Tens of thousands of people Truly, a local grassroots initiative was mobilized through the We Can't Wait campaign, which gave average citizens a voice to champion this new acute care site and investment in the health care infrastructure that our region deserves. Families and seniors in Windsor-Essex helped propel the campaign forward with social media interactions, letters to the editor, and even phone calls directly to Minister Elliott's office, and perhaps to yours as well, Premier. We all wanted to show Queen's Park that our entire region is united behind this project. And in the months ahead, Windsor Regional Hospital will consult broadly about both the new acute care site, but also the services that will remain in downtown Windsor, because we know there needs to be a significant health care presence at the Olette campus. And this will be an open and transparent consulta consultation as it's always been, and it will take all community voices into consideration. The pandemic has shown us that we need modern healthcare infrastructure to support the needs of our community. It has also shown that we just can't get this project done fast enough. And I am thrilled that our region has finally received the funding that it needs to proceed and that we have a government at Queen's Park and a Premier that is, in, that is investing in Windsor, Essex. Minister Elliott, Premier, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today and for following through on your commitment to our community and for this major milestone investment that we have fought for for so many years. It means the world that you heard our voice, that you listened to us, and that you came here today to make this investment. Thank you very much. We'll now take questions from the microphone. It'll be one at a time, please. If you could please form a line uh, for one question and one follow-up. Okay. How are you doing? Good. Uh, Maureen with Blackburn News. Uh, right. You mentioned you've had discussions with the unions, Delantis. Uh, what is the government prepared to do to help protect those jobs? Well, we're going to have a discussion uh, with Stellantis tomorrow. And what we want to do is twin these operations. You know, it's, it's, it's no, one's, no one's fault. Let's be very clear. Unifor or even Stellantis with the, the backlog of these se semiconductors and these chips that is slowing down everything around the world. But, you know, the, the provincial government 
has stepped up and said we're going to be there to, to support them and fund them. The federal government has stepped up and said we're going to be there to support them. And Stellantis has confirmed they're going to put a $1.5 billion investment here in Windsor. And we need to get not one shift going, not two shifts. We need three shifts going. Plus, we need a battery plant here. We have a lot of interest in uh, the batteries right here in, in Ontario, but specifically here in Windsor. So all the folks out there that want to open up a facility, there's no better workforce than right here at Windsor Essex. And I'm going to be pushing Slantis very, very hard uh, to, again, uh, twin their operations. Let's keep the plant going, but let's start moving on, on the, the future of uh, their facility right here. So do you see that the government can support that new investment that's coming forward? I apologize, I missed the first part. Uh, what will the government do to support that investment that's coming forward to support those next... Uh, jobs that are coming forward. Oh yeah, we're we're there. We're we're, we're committed already, and I, I know Unifor and uh, Dave Cassidy. He uh, represents Unifor, and the other folks in the room. They know we're there for them, and I just want to make sure that the the people on the lines know that I'll stand shoulder to shoulder with them and support them uh, every way I can. Uh, we're we're putting up a tremendous amount of money. So are the feds. Uh, now we have to talk to Stellantis and and really. You know, my famous saying is, I'll be on them like an 800-pound gorilla tomorrow when we're on the phone. So uh, we want to work with them, but we we want to start twinning the operations. Why wait? You know, let's, let's get this thing going. Thank you. Hello, Premier. Hi. Uh, Ann Jarvis at the Windsor Star. Hi, Ann. So now that we've uh, officially gone into Stage 2 at the hospital uh, and with the funding for that, uh, can anybody give us an idea of how this goes forward from here and when the hospital would be expected to open and, and hotel dues services be, uh, be ready? Well, the, the, the best person to answer that is the Minister of Health and maybe over to the, the mayor after that. We can't say precisely when uh, the shovel will go into the ground and the hospital will be built, but what I can say is this is a tremendous step forward, this $9.8 million for planning. It means that we'll be able to go into the actual design to make sure that the uh, hospital has all of the facilities that are needed. As a regional centre too, there are going to be lots of considerations as a cancer centre and a trauma centre as well. And that we are prepared at the Ministry of Health to work uh, directly with everyone at the hospital to bring things forward as quickly as we can. This next phase, and David Boucher will make faces or correct me if I misspeak here, but it's 18 to 24 months of work that's required to move to the following phases. But I think the important part uh, to mention here is that the the next part of the project is the two billion dollar part. It's where the rubber hits the road. Uh, and so today's good news because we move from if it ever happens to when it happens, but the, the question of when it happens becomes a function of getting two billion dollars baked into the provincial budget, which will take strong voices uh, around the table because there are many communities that are looking for health care opportunities just like the one we're looking for here. So we have to be smart in Windsor-Essex. We know that this is a top priority for the community and we need to make sure that, you know, as we're looking forward and, and uh, looking for people to push this project forward, that we have strong voices at the table who can do that. Yes, uh, and follow up. Um, regarding Stellantis, can you uh, give us any sense, you talked about a huge investment on the yeah. part of the provincial government as well as the federal government and to sort of you know, get going now and the battery. Sure. So can you give us any more details on, on the money, the pushing for a battery plant yeah. as well and, well, and not waiting? No, great, great, great question. Um, right right now, I, unfortunately, I can't give you the exact dollar figure. It's in the hundreds of millions between ourselves and the, the federal government. Stellantis knows that. But what I do promise is once we all come out and announce it, I'll give you every single uh, penny and the details, what's involved. I just... Unfortunately, I can't uh, can't do that until Stellantis is ready to make the announcement. But as St uh, Stellantis has said publicly, they're going to put in uh, 1.5 billion dollar investment, and just think of all the great uh, construction jobs that's going to be as well. And if we get a uh, battery plant, which there's a lot of people at the table, 
uh, again, they, they're talking some uh, big facilities here. They're talking anywhere from a two million to seven million, and not Slantis, just in general. I'm saying uh, facility, and that's a tremendous amount of jobs, uh, not only in construction but full-time, good-paying jobs. And we're 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 a government that builds. We're a government that uh, expands, and no matter if it's twinning the highway, or building a hospital, building schools, or building uh, new facilities for the auto sector, uh, we're we're the ones to do it. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Hi, Premier. Hi. Um, just staying on uh, Stellantis, I know um, you know in the past there's been this idea of an automotive strategy for mm -hmm. the for the province. I believe uh, Flavio Volpe has, uh, yes. has brought that up in the past. Uh, so. Uh, would you consider putting a task force together or, or a working group to, to sort of, you know, keep keep those types of jobs here yeah. and uh, do something like that? Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. And I, I got to give a shout out to Flavio. The guy's incredible. He's been a great partner with us. We work with him all the, the time. We're investing uh, over six billion dollars to make sure that we invest into the auto sector and every auto sector job is worth seven or eight private sector jobs. And uh, there's going to, just on the auto sector alone, is going to be over probably uh, $7 billion of in investment for small. But then you look at the reciprocal jobs, all the suppliers to, to their facilities as well, and, and communities that get a real bump. And so we're, we're going to continue pouring money into the auto sector. And we will be the number one manufacturer of electric vehicles, any jurisdiction in North America. And uh, everyone's ramping up, and no matter if it's Stellantis, Ford, GM, or, or Toyota and Honda, uh, they're all going down that avenue. And uh, again, why why not make batteries here? I keep uh, you know mentioning these batteries from day one. Uh, we we have all the the natural resources. Uh, we have the lithium. Uh, we have the nickel. We have the cobalt. Uh, folks, everything is here. We don't need to bring uh, these batteries in from overseas. We have everything here. On top of that, we have the, the best workforce anywhere in the world. I'll put our folks up against anyone. We have an incredible, incredible team across this province, and we have some of the best uh, people right here in Windsor, Essex. So we're, we're excited. We need to uh, get things moving, and any, any people out there that are, are listening that want to expand in Ontario, especially the battery business, we'll be at your front doorstep, and we'll be ready to make a deal with you. I believe the the initial uh, announcement of that 1.5 uh, billion came along with the promise of government funds at that time. So does that give you yeah. concern? You know, you've offered in the past uh, these things were standing, and still they made this decision. Yeah, well, I'm concerned, and I, you know, let's put this into perspective. It's, it's, it's number one, it's, it's challenging for the people, but you know, there's good news at the end of the day. Um, they're they're going to invest 1.5 billion dollars. Uh, we want the, the plant to be going three shifts, which I truly believe it will be going back to three shifts. So I have confidence, but I'm going to make sure that I'm transparent with the public. Once I meet with Stellantis and, and Unifor has been an incredible partner, uh, no matter if it's uh, Jerry Diaz or Dave Cassidy, uh, we all work like this together, every, all, all of us. So uh, we'll get it done. I'm, I'm very confident. Hi, Premier. Hi. Angelo Verso with CTV. Hi, Angelo. Um, unrelated, but with regards to the economy following this announcement and stuff, um, do you have a plan or is there an announcement on when a plan will be announced um, with regards to easing restrictions for restaurants and other businesses? Yeah, so the plan will be out uh, this week. We've been working on it for, for weeks and weeks, actually, now. Uh, we we want to make sure we have a plan that will, will stand the test of time moving forward. Uh, we never, ever want to shut down this economy again. And everyone from frontline healthcare workers to the people of Ontario, I'm very, very grateful. I want to thank you. The reason we're one of the leaders in the world with this vaccine rollout, it's not, it's not me, it's the people. The people and the healthcare workers. I went to a vac center today and uh, they were so organized. And, and that, that goes uh, for so many of them across the, the province. So uh, stay tuned. We'll, we'll have it uh, this week sometime. But we're, we're, we'll nail it down. Thank you. Hi, Premier. Hi. How oh, are bonjour. You? Uh, bonjour. Yes, I'm Elvis from Radio Canada. Elvis, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Good. So my first question, uh, why did you stop taking French classes? And uh, do you still <laughs> promise to learn French? Oh, I never, you know something, the pandemic made me stop it. And I, I, 
I practice all the time. Like, like all of us, anyone who grew up, or at least I did, you took six years of French in, in school, and I'm, I'm bound and determined. I'm going to learn French. And I had a great French teacher. And do you know who else is, is teaching me at the odd time? Is uh, Caroline Mulroney. She's a great French teacher and always gives me the phrases. So I'll, I'll get there. But I just wanted to be safe. I, I, I couldn't take the classes. When I'm telling other people to go online and take classes, I couldn't have my... Uh, French teacher come in, but I'm back at it. We'll, we'll get going. So hopefully next year we'll speak French together. Hopefully. It might be a little broken, but at least <laughs> what I want to show is how much I, I respect the Francophone uh, community here, and and I'll, I'll do everything to, to make sure that they know that I'm doing everything I can to uh, speak French. And we're doing some incredible things for the Francophone community that's never been done in this province uh, before with the, the leadership of, of Caroline uh, uh, Melroney and uh, Natalia Kusindova as well as her parliamentary assistant. So it's fantastic. Okay, thank you. So my second question, uh, your labor minister gave a speech uh, to a group of union last week and said, we are on your side yep. uh, and talk about bad cooperation that take advantage of workers. So why should workers believe your government is on their side and against corporations? Well, it's not about being against or for anyone. I've, we've always been uh, for the frontline, hardworking union people. I think for the first time ever, the building trades that I went to uh, with, uh, with uh, the minister, first time a, a, a PC member, a premier, got a standing ovation before he even spoke. And that, that's from the whole board and, and the, uh, the, the crowd of probably 600 people. Do you know why? Because I support them. Uh, excuse the pun about construction, but I'll break a brick wall down to support them. They know I'm on their side. We're there for the working, uh, uh, hardworking uh, folks and men and women that are out there. We put in uh, tens of millions of dollars in training programs. Do you know what our biggest problem is right now? We need people. We're in such desperate need of people from around the world, which I'm going to be reaching out to the prime minister. I can't emphasize it enough. We're, we're short a couple hundred thousand people, and not to mention in the trades. Yeah, we're, we're pouring $144 billion into infrastructure, building hospitals, building schools, and, and as, as we're twinning the roads down here, highways uh, right across this province and bridges. But we need people. And so, folks, if you have some hardworking people, I just have one criteria. You come here like every other new Canadian has come here, you work your tail off. If you think you're coming to collect the dole and sit around, not going to happen. Go somewhere else. If you want to work, come here. We have so much work, we can't keep up with it uh, right now. And the reason we have so much work, we've created the environment and the conditions for, for companies to come here and thrive and prosper and grow. And the words out there around the world, come to Ontario. We're, we are now competitive. We, we took $7 billion of burden to be competitive against uh, our, our U.S. friends and, and everywhere else in the world. Because before the previous government, they weren't competitive. We lost 300,000 jobs under the previous government. And in 18 months, we created the environment and the condition to, to gain 307,000 jobs. I always say the environment. Because if government creates jobs, we're all in trouble. And I think I've said many times, the worst place you can hand your money over is to the government. We, we have a different theory. Put more money into people's pockets, they're going to have an opportunity to go out there and, again, do a renovation, buy a fridge, go out for dinner, stimulate the economy. Put more money into businesses, they're going to stay here. And we don't have to uh, worry about losing companies to Ohio and Michigan, New York State, like we did years before. Now companies are pouring in. Our biggest problem right now, we need people. I don't care where, where they come from around the world. If you're willing to come and work and pay your taxes and give back to the community, we want you. And I'm going to aggressively, uh, very aggressively um, work with the, the, the federal government to, to get uh, more people to call Ontario home. And this will be the last question. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Mr. Premier. Good afternoon. I like your haircut. Hey, thanks. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of hair went. No. Um, so the QR codes, Friday is the, the day we're going to start winding up yeah. the QR. Why is the Ontario government allowing the old vaccine certificates to be still used even after it's been clearly shown at how easy they are forged? Yeah, you know, Jamie, great question, first of all. But there, there's a lot of seniors out there, 
and our, our constituent offices are trying to, to help them work through it or their family members. But not everyone, uh, you know, carries around their, their, their cell phone. I'm talking elderly parents. Um, so we're going to make sure that we still have the little vaccine certificates. And, you know, we, we rely on businesses and the people of Ontario and the vast majority of the people have their first shot. I think it's 87.5, which is really just blows my mind. 87.5 will hit our 90%, which is unheard of. And, and then the second dose, they're, they're following up, I think 83.4 uh, or something this morning. So we, we still have to keep that for people that aren't as savvy uh, on on the tech side. Like, like I'm not the savvy guy on the tech side, that's for sure. Okay, and the, the QR rollout too, I should have asked that in there too, because yep. um, uh, apparently it's getting jammed up. But the next thing, what question is, does Ontario need a registration system for medical exemptions for vaccines to verify them? Two more doctors have been uh, told not to um, issue medical vaccines. Um, mm -hmm. This and by them issuing uh, vaccine exemption certificates, even though they're they're not truly valid, does that mean people are walking around with these certificates and the, and have not been well, properly we, vaccinated? You know, and will yeah. the Ontario College of Physicians look into the reasons? Like, there's not a lot of reasons for yeah unvaccinated. Well, people. I have I have all the confidence in the Ontario College of Physicians. They've always done a great job. They can kind of police their their physicians, and I, I'm going to rely on them. And, um, you know, the, the two docs, I, I guess they got their hands slapped over this. And, you know, that, that's, that's going to be uh, the government and, again, the, the college uh, working hand in hand. But um, I, have, I have all the confidence in all our docs and, and the college. So anyway, thank you. anyways, folks, thank you so much. Uh, great to see everyone again. I want to thank everyone from Windsor, Essex, especially uh, all the other mayors. Uh, Mayor Dilkin, he's here, but there's so many other mayors over here. And uh, I just can't wait to come back and uh, start tossing the dirt around and, and getting shovels in the ground. So way to go, Windsor, Essex. You're all champions. Thank you.